Munster football final. It's by far the busiest rivalry in football. The counties have already met an incredible 24 times in the new millennium. Well, commentary comes from Martin Carney and Ger Canning. It may be a bone of contention elsewhere, but Cork clearly believe that you can still perform at the top level playing both codes. So Owen Cadigan and Damien Cahalan among the backs and Aidan Walsh in midfield seek to win a Munster football crown seven days ahead of the hurling decider. Meanwhile, defending champions Kerry make four changes for this afternoon's big joust with the Rebels. Aidan O'Mahony returns to full back as a start for Anthony Marr in midfield, while Donica Walsh and James O'Donoghue have recovered from injury and they both join the attack. This is uh, Barry O'Driscoll, back as far as Pa Kelly. Cork are patient, deliberate in their approach. Tom Clancy back here as far as Aidan Walsh. Having uh, a cut to try and get through here, get it onto his right, looking for the opening score, and he's got it beautifully done. A minute and 13 seconds, Aidan Walsh getting the opening point of this match. Yeah, he brought order to the indecision that was going on with the Cork attack that time, took responsibility, shot a very good opening score for Cork. This is back here with John James Lockery, the former Antrim player. Finton Gould now. Cork establishing a firm platform in the middle of the park as Clancy sets it up here with Paul Kerrigan. Kerrigan taking off, after him goes Paul Murphy. Nice ball inside here. Barry O'Driscoll controlling it, back in here as far as Daniel Goulding, whipping it off his left, and Goulding sees it strike the post and go over the bar conveniently. Point for Goulding, second one for Cork, and only two minutes are gone. That's beautiful approach work that time by Cork, in particular by Barry O'Driscoll, gives the pass eventually, and well flight of ball by Daniel Goulding, a very confident start, it must be said, uh, by Cork. You've got eight points against Kerry in the league back in April. This is Kerry's second attack now. James O'Donoghue, the current All-Star, surrounded immediately. Look at the intensity that Cork are bringing to their game. Referee seemed to blow his whistle, but Kerry continued. O'Donoghue kicks it and scores. For a moment there, it looked like there was going to be a free out, but the referee said play on. James O'Donoghue did so. Well, that time he got involved in some really vicious and abrasive tackling by the Cork class. I don't know how he managed to get the ball back, but fair juice to he did. Went on to his weaker right foot, just slots it over the ball, uh, bar. That's a very good score for Donahue, because quite honestly, Ger, I figured he was well and truly possessed. I think there might have been a, a possible advantage as well going to Kerry that time. The referee correctly played on. Brian Sheehan, neatly down, in here as far as Paul Ganey six points in the last match against Clare. Transferred here to Johnny Buckley, and very, very quickly indeed, Kerry rattle off two points. That's a neat one by Johnny Buckley, and it's two points apiece. Yeah, it must be said, actually, Ger, that Kerry are playing with the benefit of quite a good win at the moment, and that was indicated there by how easily uh, Buckley was able to flight that ball over the bar. Ken O'Halloran's kick reaches midfield. John O'Rourke reaches up, but Declan O'Sullivan takes it back here. And from Drummond Pierce's overall Ireland winning captain, of course. Neatly in, just beyond James O'Donoghue, carry a little bit out of luck that time. This is going to be taken once again by Daniel Goulding. And that's uh, straight over, no problems whatsoever. So a uh, second one for him today. And Cork back in front by three points to two. Too late. So James O'Donoghue able to put this one over. And they go point for point, three points apiece and seven. So Kerry would need to be building up a, a lead, you would imagine, by half time. Here's Aidan Walsh, kicked long. Kerrigan got a touch. Goulding carries it on, has a support player, doesn't need him, kicks it himself, and it's gone over the bar. No, it's not. The man on the left seemed to indicate it was. He's convinced it was as well. I'm absolutely certain the man on the left-hand side nodded for a point, but perhaps the man on the right-hand side felt he had a better view of that. Cormac Riley is the uh, ultimate arbiter. Goulding is convinced. Daniel Goulding from the ball left his foot was convinced that that ball had gone over the bar. At the moment, it's still... Cork with just a two-man inside forward line, so that's why he's allowed to come down. 
And now he's watching James O'Donoghue go this way and that against Michael Shields, make a better angle for himself. That was clever. Really good play. And a third point already by James O'Donoghue, two of them coming from open play. Kerry Always very good with free kicks, but this time he's missed it. Fitted Gould surrounded. Now the eagerness and the intensity is coming from Kerry. Declan O'Sullivan now. Players in support. Breaking forward here once again, Stephen O'Brien. Solos. Then looks up. Picks out Paul Ganey. And Ganey manages to get enough space to get his kick in and put it over the bar. Beto and counting into that. He's got a first point in this match. And that'll do his confidence a whole lot of good playing in just his third ever championship match. Yeah, those two guys actually, Stephen O'Brien and, and Ganey, are much smaller physically than the players that are, are, that are being barked by. Rory Dean from uh, a recently very successful Cork junior team. Killian Young now. Here's Declan O'Sullivan. Again, good movement ahead, super movement there by Ganey. Got away from his man, kicked with confidence. He's having a great start to this match. Kerry are certainly enjoying themselves at Pork Equive. Yeah, they're creating the space very well. Ganey's movement off the ball is superb. On Cadigan isn't tight enough. Off. Park, they're leaving two men up front. Cork are bringing a sweeper back there. It's Dean. It's three against two. But when one of the two happens to be James O'Donoghue, you know what kind of danger that spells. Controls it. There's an injury to one of the court players. Dean hits it. The umpires have a look at it and decided just wavered in the breeze somewhat and went wide. Midfield. And he has lost that ball, coughing it up here. And Brian Sheehan kicks it forward here accurately down as far as James O'Donoghue. Quick look at where the movement is. Thought about the diagonal pass. Holding it up instead for uh, Johnny Buckley to come on to. Missed one a little while ago, having another go here, and why not? That persistence pays off, and he's kicked a second. Two out of three isn't half bad, and Kerry lead by four. On his feet, and he wants to continue, and that is a good sign. From the free, it's kicked and put wide by James O'Donoghue. Half time, knowing they have the breeze behind them for the second half. Again, the wind holds it up quite noticeably here. Buckley took it initially, and then it was Brian Sheehan very happily recovered. A greater tenacity and cutting edge is coming from Kerry Ray. So this is Brian Sheehan's second kick. Missed the first one. And he had no intention of missing the second one. Not the kind of habit he wants to minister, so. This is towards Aidan Walsh. He'll tip it down, but it's Kerry who are now picking up those crumbs. Walsh that time out as far as Killian Young looks up, sees movement from uh, O'Donoghue. He fell, and the fell almost deceived. Michael Shields, and in the end, there's great composure by O'Donoghue, who really is an all-star. Four points. This is a match winner if ever I saw one. I oh, have yeah, it all is everything is to do with this movement. Beautiful kind of change of direction. Leaves Michael Shields on his backside literally and shoots another very good point. But just the carry the first half. Cork came back strongly in the second. But Cork have not now scored for 20 minutes of this monster final. Donegal Walsh booting it in, good accuracy again, straight into the hands of Ganey. Again, it moves inside here, nobody able to mark this fellow. Oh, well stopped. James O'Donoghue going for a goal, and uh, Keno... He almost tried to pass the ball yeah. beyond the goalkeeper into the corner. Didn't quite get the angles right, didn't get the pace of it right. Stephen O'Brien, lively, very competitive, very comfortable in the surroundings. Work here for Paul Ganey to do, rescues it from going out over the end line taking on Owen Cadigan next. Again, holds, waits. O'Donoghue always available, playing brilliantly. Back in here as far as O'Brien, and Stephen O'Brien hoping this one will go between the posts. And he splits the uprights brilliantly. He's got his first point. Scored two points here two summers ago for the uh, Kerry Juniors. Now he's a top-class senior, and he's made it 10-3 and Cork are in trouble. Yeah, well, you have to credit Guinea that time at rescuing an impossible situation. Just going back to the save again. Ball was probably hit too yeah, easily that time. Uh, Walsh. One of the uh, elder Lemons is aware of this particular team, although he's only 29. Back in as far as Johnny Buckley. 
This looks promising. Oh, it might even have been a goal there for Brian Sheehan. Gets a point instead to go with the point from a free earlier on, but that had real possibilities. The defence opened up, the movement was brilliant. Too easy altogether once more for Kerry. Buckley has all the time in the world to set up Sheehan coming through un unopposed. And Still, Anthony Marr waiting and look, finding the player inside perfectly. Paul Ganey. He's left his marker for dead. There was nothing Cadigan could do about it, and Ganey's got a third. They are absolutely ripping this Cork defence to shreds. They lead by nine, and they might be even further ahead. Possibly oh, they should, should be. They should be indeed, Jaron. It's underpinned by a ruthlessness and a commitment to open football. Beautiful patience evident that time. But Kerry have that uh, self-assurance to be able to hold on, withstand challenges. Kerrigan still down, by the way, injured. Play continues. Declan O'Sullivan kicking it, and it's all going wonderfully well for the green and gold of Kerry so far. Declan O'Sullivan deserves that point. The fans... Here he goes now. And that one is over the bar, so now he does have a third. Two of them from freeze. And Cork... So nine points between the teams. Pa Kelly bringing the ball forward to Kerrigan. Wherever he goes, Paul Murphy goes as well. After him goes Brian Chi, and it's still Kerrigan into a maze. Back here to Gould, they need a score, Paul. Can he get in? He fists it strongly, and it puts it over the bar. They've got a last couple of points now here. Failed by eight. Colm and Kieran here with me. Colm, are you surprised it's been so comfortable for Kerry? Yeah, really, Kerry should have the game beyond reach at this stage. Uh, after 10 minutes, I thought it was going to be a brilliant game. The first 10 minutes were fast and open. And once Kerry got into a system of play where Declan O'Sullivan has hung back as a sort of a sweeper around the middle of the field, not back in his own defence so much, but sweeping around the middle of the field, and then all the Cork kickouts seem to go towards their right half back position there for quite a while, where Anthony Buckley has dominated. So Cork then have got caught in this sort of lateral play, which we thought had gone with Brian Cuthbert, but Kerry have jammed up their back line, have broken quickly, and they seem to be able to produce these corner forwards out of a hat every year, Paul Ganey, Stephen O'Brien, in the Gucci sort of shape and make, and winning everything. And we, we see here, after 10 minutes, uh, James O'Donoghue, who has been given the whole Cork back line a ragged time, and uh, Paul Ganey then with a couple of brilliant points. But the thing about it is, around the middle of the field, Kerry are given in fantastic ball to their inside forwards. And there's great movement off the ball, whereas at the other end of the field, it's exactly the opposite. Yeah, it, it, a lot of it, there is coming from midfield domination, you know. And I, I feel, I mean, Killarney from last year, it's, it, it's taken the identical path to the game, you know. Um, Kerry have absolutely blitzed them, you know. It, how do you get your inside forward line working? You get a platform in midfield, you know? And before this game, I was looking at Ken O'Halloran went short on a lot of his kickouts in the game against Tipperary, and it was like Cork were trying something, they're trying to get the ball out quick, that they didn't trust their midfield. He's gone long, he doesn't have a strong kick out into the wind, and they have struggled badly. They don't have Finton Gould and Aidan Walsh. They're, they're good ball players on the ground, but they're, they, they have, their primary role should be to win that ball in the air, and Kerry are blitzing them across that middle section. And we, we mentioned before there onto it comes Tom Clancy taken by O'Driscoll back here again it comes booted in by Noel Galvin this time that's the kind of ball they were looking for but the brakes come down and this time there is a trip and it's uh, Colin O'Neill who goes a tumble and it's got to be a free in it's just outside the square so it's going to be free from the 20 meter line and the tactics straight away pretty obvious but hit it in as far as Brian Hurley and let the others pick up the brakes. Yeah, I think it's a soft uh, enough free, and it must be said. And on the other side, when Killian Young was going forward, he felt he was fouled by... Match. His uh, brother starred in the minor match, although they lost in that game. Also playing at number 14, and he's got his first here of the... Daniel Goulding with two points from free so far, three in all, and this one straight over. So it's a very positive start to the second half by the home team here against Down and all those 45 and long range frees that he took that day. This is an important one. This to further eat into Kerry's lead and he's got another one. To his face, 
against Kerry for the second half. Trying to curl it inside, he got enough on it, he got the direction right, beautifully over. A third for Brian Sheehan. So two converted 45s, six points between the teams once again. Yeah, that's beautiful technique, he drew the ball in. Back out again here, Stephen O'Brien now driving hard, so near the uh, large rectangle there. Donahue from the Legion in Killarney, booting it over. So five for the day, Lee holds it up. He so, just shows such wonderful awareness and confidence in his play. Kerry are looking very confident right throughout the field. The passes are perfect. Once again, head down. And it's still there. And the chance availed of brilliantly. He's having a field day, James O'Donoghue. And there is nothing really that any of the backs, in particular Michael Shields, is able to do about it. And the bearded number two is uh, struggling to keep up with O'Donoghue. Yeah, with well, the clinical... Or goal once again. It'll be Brian Sheen who will attempt to put it over the bar. The angle's uh, almost impossible, you would think, for most mere mortals. But with Brian Sheen, you never know. There's the strength of the breeze there in the background. You saw for a moment. And that is angle. He's got it. It's an amazing kick on what is turning out to be a wonderful day for Kerry. A great response to what Cork had been doing at the beginning of the second half. A fourth for Brian Sheehan. An amazing free kick from a very, very tight and tricky angle. Nine between them again. That flawless technique stands to him. Boy, is he happy about it. That's delightful to watch. Owen Cadigan picking this one up. Part of that beleaguered defence all the way down as far as Mark Collins. He'd have been very disappointed not to start. Played in most of the league matches. This time Hurley falls over, helped, the referee has decided, and it's going to be a free into court. Nobody able to mark him that day. Crowd silent somewhat. They need something to cheer about, they need something to get behind. And he's put this one over. Whether or not the three players who are playing hurling and football are able to play at the highest level that they need to be to win Munster Championship Finals. Stephen O'Brien coming forward, wriggling his way in. That's great ball carrying ability. And in the end, O'Donoghue, he is the tormentor. What a performance! Well, this will be remembered as the James O'Donoghue Monster Final. It's been sensational. It's been sens Once again, it is Declan O'Sullivan holding. Nobody able to touch this man. Nobody able to dispossess him. Just carries, almost playing with the Cork defence on occasions. Danica Walsh didn't need to go for a goal that time. Very happy just to kick it over the bar. His last goal was in Croke Park, one of the three, of course, that uh, Kerry got that day against Dublin. Yeah, and just watch it again. You talked a couple of moments ago about the unfairness may be evident in asking Aidan Walsh to play at the top level in football. Held on to here by Mark Collins. Looking for an angle to try and hit a point in here, and maybe a goal! What a brilliant take that was by Brian Kelly. That was a wonderful save by Brian Kelly. From the Legion in Killarney, that's the club of... Here he is really improved. From Declan O'Sullivan to Johnny Buckley. And another one has gone over. Three for Johnny Buckley. Who could have doubted the wisdom of starting him in midfield alongside Anthony Marr? Can keep things going for Kerry. John Hayes has just come in. That's Cork's final sub. They need goals. They need a massive miracle. And they've got a point from Daniel Goulding in the meantime. Six. Again, Darren O'Sullivan ready to dart forward. Johnny Buckley, Darren O'Sullivan continued his run. Buckley just holds on to it, shrugs aside the challenge nonchalantly and kicks it over as though the challenge wasn't there. He just is so comfortable. And this is a monster final when they should be put to the pin of their collar. But here they are playing at Porky Cueve, set to beat Cork in their home patch at a monster final for the first time since 2005. And O'Donoghue, they can only just stand back and admire what a, an absolutely brilliant performance this is. Eight for him. Off into space there and touching it on, Darren O'Sullivan. No real hint of an injury in that performance so far. And James O'Donoghue. His marker now is James Lockery. 
somehow he managed to get it between the uprights for a ninth. The court defenders are going to have nightmares about this man. And this is next. It's key ball time. Donica Walsh can do as they will. It's a case of who hasn't scored yet. Oh. He certainly has. That is a tenth for James O'Donoghue. Two of them have been from freeze, the rest from open play, and he has simply demolished what court defence there was today. I'd love to see the lads tonight and we're doing. As far as Damien Cahalan. Bounces off the shoulder of Fionn Fitzgerald in as far as Colm O'Driscoll. The other one's gone wide. But there's no doubt about it from midfield up, Jared. They're quite formidable. I'm not so sure about the defence. I'd like to see them put under more pressure. Another one for uh, Brian Hurt. Colm O'Neill, who has had three cruciate injuries. Good to see him back there. And in the end, it's helped over the bar by the hand of Brian Hurley. Hurley's got four. That's his only point from open play. Helped in by Daniel Goulding, touched over the bar by Hurley. Good work. It's Tipperary in the semi-final, so it shouldn't come as an absolute shock to people. But what will? This is uh, Kieran Donaghy down. It seems to have all gone kind of wrong for Cork ever since that turnaround against Dublin in the league semi-final. A 17-point turnaround that afternoon. De De oh, that was a high elbow. Yeah, Declan Sullivan, he caught the elbow right on the chin that time. That is a oh, bad, yeah. bad tackle. That's a bad tackle. That's a dangerous tackle. Referee has uh, consulted with his linesman. And now there's a row breaking out down near the uh, D. And Corvick Riley has to go down and intervene. Yes, it's been very frustrating for Cork. They're very frustrating for their supporters as well, I'm sure, watching it. And uh, thankfully it doesn't develop. But right now the referee is going to bring across the man who came on as a sub, John Hayes, and he gets a red card for that. He can't really have performance from Kerry. It certainly was. It was an annihilation. It wasn't a game at all. And, you know, if you look at it from the Kerry point of view, it was a fantastic team performance, and I think what uh, Eamon Fitzmaurice has done is introduced a few new forwards, like Paul Ganey and Stephen O'Brien, and James O'Donoghue, who became the real man today in the absence of the Gooch. He's reinvented uh, Declan O'Sullivan and Brian Sheehan and Aidan O'Mahony and Mark O'Shea to a certain extent and re-energised those. But the other side of the thing, of course, is the total collapse and the spineless performance by Cork. And I, I, I would stress that that is the correct word for it, because in this historic stadium, and it being knocked down, you would think that the Cork players would come out with passion and with, with great energy in their blood to make sure that they signed off on a very high note. Instead of that, they did exactly the opposite. Really questions... You know, a lot of these Cork players going forward and the boys drew attention to the dual player role. I think that is a serious question. But I think Kerry have announced themselves as a serious contender. So if you have backed Dublin for the All-Ireland, there's no need to form an orderly queue at the payout window <laughs> in, in the bookies just yet. I never bet on anything. A lot of things you said there, Colin, which are very striking. The, the, the one word that, that jumps out at me is, is spineless. And that... Uh, Kieran, your thoughts on that description of Cork? Those two words yeah. don't go together. And I can't disagree with Conor. Uh, they lack fight, they lack spirit. They came out the start of the second half. They looked like they were going to play for about three or four minutes. They showed a bit of intensity, uh, but they were they were beaten all over the pitch. Um, I think you have to hand it to Em Fitzmaurice tactically. Um, they, they were so dominant right right throughout throughout, throughout the pitch. Uh, you've also got a question, you know. A lot of us, and even us pundits, we, we, we call this one wrong. Uh, but a lot, a lot of the theories of Cork being refreshed based on league form and how we analyse league form. We look at Derry. Derry are gone out of the championship. We look at that flat performance by Cork today. They were, they were flying high in April. So Fitzmaurice has got a good knack of, of getting his team right to peak at the right time. Like the likes of Declan O'Sullivan, held them back in the league, didn't play a whole lot of football, realised his miles on the clock, and he instrumented everything today around the middle of the park and set up a lot of attacks. So but you can't tactically. beat you can't beat forwards that take on their men. Yeah, like and they James had, they, 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 one on one, man. they were they yeah. ripped them to shreds. Paul ripped Gainey, them to shreds. All he wanted to do was get the ball 
Donegal and go at his man. Cork had nobody like that. And I would say the Cork supporters who came here today and the Cork people sitting at home would be absolutely disgusted with the level of performance of their own team. And I know they're amateur players mm. and we have to be... Good uh, careful not to be overly critical but if I was a Cork person or a Cork player today I'd be Disgusted. going away and hiding for a week and, and look we made this point at half for uh, Anthony Marr for Kerry and overall absolutely thoroughly convincing winners I suppose it was a day when a lot of things went well for us uh, probably not as well for Cork um, we converted a lot of our chances um, you know we got ahead of them in the scoreboard and we were able to stay picking away the whole time the gap was probably a bit too big so look whether it was by a pint or whatever in the end we're, we're happy enough just to be going for Crow Park now again We started very very well and certainly the wind was very strong and we, we felt that we were doing okay next thing uh, carried a couple of shots and a couple of wides and we kicked out the ball and we just didn't compete in the break and uh, Kerry opened us up and they were scoring at will, to be honest. And, um, you know, by the end there, we were only waiting for the game to be over, to be honest. We just, uh, as I say, we've left a huge amount of people down and we, you know, we're, we're, we're very, very disappointed with ourselves. It's tough on Cork after, you know, a lot of preparation, but Kerry were classy, Dermot. Oh, Kerry were excellent today. I mean, you know, straight from the back, they hunted in packs. They, they were hungry, they were quick. They had great pace coming out of defence, uh, excellent kick passing. Uh, their midfield were very strong mm. and then all of their six forwards scored and then if you look at the subs that they're, they're able to bring on you know so they had a great game everything worked for them today um, but yeah certainly very impressive for Cork I mean there's cold stats I suppose their last two games they just mm. got past tip Dublin beat them well in the League semi-final, you, you've got even the yeah. hardest stats, which is tough on a team now when it's just not going well. It is, and like, I, I, I don't want to throw a, a, any tough words uh, against Cork. Like, they didn't go into play like that, but the bottom line is their performance was shocking, I mean, in a provincial final. Mm. I just looked at a few, a few of the numbers that uh, no score at all uh, for half an hour in the first half. No score from play for 36 minutes in the first half. No score from play for 22 minutes uh, in the second half. Two forwards scored. You know, the full back line was, was destroyed. The, the dual players looked very, very tired. You, you know, their touch was way off. I, I, don't, know, I don't know what Brian, uh, what, what comfort he could take from it. Perhaps just that they're in the easier side of the, of the qualifier draw is about the only comfort I can see right now tonight for them. It, it, it'll take a big job to resurrect themselves from that performance. It really was that poor day. Okay. Let's look at Kerry then, Dermot. Uh, Eamon for tomorrow was very, you know, not playing it up. But you're very impressed with how he has moulded this yeah. team. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a new Kerry. I mean, look, we look at last year, the retirements. They don't have a gooch. Mm. Uh, they have closed training sessions in Killarney. He's really putting his stamp. They have an outside trainer. And uh, I suppose one of the things that Kerry always mentioned was they would never play defensively. But if we look at the stat there, I think there's 12 players behind the ball at that stage. And it's because they need to adjust. And if they're going to qualify uh, to take on the likes of Dublin, they do need to adjust. And we can see Declan O'Sullivan was yeah. the playmaker come sweeper. And when I say playmaker in that he replaced the Gooch, he was able to make those kick passes that you know, the Gooch could, could make, and he st stood, out, stood in for him. But if we look at it here, there's some brilliant defence. Again, you have the 12 players behind the ball, and this is, this is something that we would never have associated with Kerry, but we will now, because they acknowledge that if they're going to go forward, this is the type of play they need. And again, here's Declan O'Sullivan, you know, winning a ball around the middle of the field, um, passing it off. As I said, setting up, he, not only was he a sweeper, but he was also a playmaker. And... Uh, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard uh, role to fill, especially to replace the Gooch, yeah. but look at him there from 45 yards out mm. with the left foot. He was, he was truly, truly excellent today. And again, like, you know, we don't usually associate with this, with Kerry football. But it was still had good to, to watch. It was yeah. still good to watch. Yeah. They had to adapt. They're still able to play the long ball. So yeah. they're exciting. It's a new Kerry. And we look forward to seeing him later on in the championship. Well, well, speaking of that, Kevin, you're a purist. You love a good foot pass. And there were plenty of yeah. them today. Well, I, I thought the, the Kerry foot pass in the first, We only analysed the first half because like, the game was busted at mm. half time, really. But the quality of their foot passing, uh, well, it's always been of a very, very high standard. Uh, I was just laughing uh, a while ago, which I'd say it was a bad foot pass. A lot of Kerry lads would walk by it mm. and not touch it. But it's of the highest order. Good foot passing m makes a good mobile inside forward almost unmarkable if, if it's to advantage if it's wing side if it's early if it's on the first bounce like James Lerner gets the ball it's too late now 
the, the defender is not going to, in the form he was in today, the defender is not going to get back at him. Uh, so that you know, if you go wing side or you do a dummy run, empty out a corner, and you know the standard of foot passing coming in from a midfielder, or Declan, Declan Sullivan, as Dermot pointed out, well, you're going to come off your marker with huge confidence and then turn, take him on, bang. Should they have double marked? Well, uh, in, hi in, in hindsight now, uh, that's something that Cork are going to have to think about. I mean, they did essentially go man for man. Uh, and James O'Donoghue, who, uh, you know, mm. 10 points he scored in this provincial final in, in a magnificent performance. But, like, l look at that for a pass. That's down his throat, you yeah. know, mm. just wriggles off. And then the slicer with the right foot. That is top, top. Now, it's unmarkable, really. Yeah. Uh, it's just so difficult on a defender to try and anticipate that ball. At midfield as well, the breaking ball. Yeah. Well, do you see, this, this added to the trouble. You can look at this as fantastic uh, curry, uh, energy and enthusiasm, but you can also look at it as Cork being really almost on the edge, and I'll use this word, disinterested almost, and, and that might sound a, a wee bit harsh, but there was a period in the first half where they didn't get a solitary breaking ball, I'd say, for 10 minutes. Uh, and I had an old coach once you say, I'll know if you're going for the breaking ball, if you're lying down on the floor, banjacks after belts, or you're coming in for, with cuts off you, mm. or whatever. That was never likely to happen because there was only a weak paw going in every now and then looking for the ball. It wasn't been, how shall I say, contested with the gusto that a provincial final demands. I think that's as fair <laughs> as I can be uh, to some of the Cork lads. Curry swamped it. They got 11 points on the trot from this dominance days. Mm. And as I said, that allowed them to have the game wrapped up by half time. And in fairness to Cork lads, can it happen sometimes, Kevin, that it's just everything's going against you? Is that too simplistic a way of. Well, uh, those 11 points were scored in 27 minutes. Uh, every ball essentially went Kerry's way. I, I don't accept that some of those breaks yeah. could not have been uh, hoovered up by a committed wing back or a committed wing forward. Uh, it's, it was just too, too many breaks yeah. for my liking. But days do happen when the ball bounces badly, but somebody needed to get a grip of it and, and change the direction. I have to remember that Cork don't have their first choice midfield. Well, when I say that, I mean, Alan O'Connor, we looked last year, he came in at half time. Pierce Kerry were hammering him, yeah. Pierce yeah. O'Neill, they were hammering him midfield, and those two lads were able to, were able to, to steady the ship and they're real midfielders and, and they're able to deal with that breaking ball. They've lost a few players. Fintan Gould isn't yeah. a midfielder and, and you know, 